Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Star Trek New Horizons. In this video we are going to be looking at the Borb traditions in Star Trek New Horizons, which are very different from every other empire. This video is part of a series of tutorial videos about Star Trek New Horizons. You can see the full playlist in the description below. These videos are done in collaboration with Cornish Ratbeard. If you like them, please remember to leave a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channels. When you open the Traditions menu as the Borg, if you've played Star Trek New Horizons before, you will immediately notice that the traditions presented here are very different from the base traditions that other empires have. These are to reflect the nature of the Borg, which can be a bit tricky at first to master. Let's start at the top left-hand tradition, which is the Resilience Tree. This set of traditions deal with overcoming challenges that you will face as the Collective. When you first adopt this tree, your army damage will be increased by 20%. Finishing this tree will not only unlock a new ascension perk, but will also increase your ship fire rate by 10% as well. Like all tradition trees, there are five options. Going from the top left, the first one is the modular fleet template. This increases the fleet command limit by 40. This means that your fleets can hold up to 40 more points in terms of ships than it could before. Please note that this does not mean it can have 40 more ships, as Borg ships cost more than one point per ship. The next is Selective Devastation, which allows for the Borg to adapt when fighting. More on this can be found in the full tutorial playlist in the description below. The third tradition is Superior Electronic Warfare, which increases code breaking by two. This will affect your espionage missions or operation missions, which are also covered in another tutorial. The fourth option, Optimal Resource Prioritization, increases the number of starbases by two and decreases the upgrade cost by 25%. The final option is Combat Variable Mitigation. This allows your Admirals to reach a higher level than they could normally, which is usually level 6. The second tradition tree is Versatility. This tree focuses on adapting to different conditions and the options within this tree reflect that. As you can see here, there is no benefit for simply adopting the tree. The finisher effect is that one ascension perk is unlocked. The first option is Operational Proxies. This increases the complex drone output by 5%. These are the drones that work on unicomplexes, subcomplexes, and planets that do more advanced jobs, such as creating alloys or maintaining the collective. The second option is peak performance. This tradition decreases the upkeep from worker drone jobs by 5%. This means that any resource or energy that is required for these jobs will be affected by this tradition. The next tradition is universal compatibility. This decreases the nanite cost per job by 5%. Any job that requires nanites now uses 5% fewer nanites per month. The fourth option is adaptive programming. When you assimilate POPs, the amount of research points you get will be increased by selecting this tradition. The fifth and final option in the versatility tree is material analysis. This increases the monthly unity gained per month by 10%. The third tree that we can adopt as the Borg is the adaptation tree. This focuses on ensuring the Collective is able to survive and adapt to unforeseen situations. Finishing this tree gives you one Ascension perk. The first option under the Adaptation Tradition tree is the Alcove Upgrade Algorithm Tradition. This improves it POP environmental tolerance by 5% and comes into effect when Borg POPs find themselves in non-assimilated biomes. The second tradition is the Maturation Chamber Synapses. This improves the POP housing multiplier by 5%, meaning that your POPs will take up 5% less housing than previously. Also, the amount of crew that is produced on your planets is increased by 5%. The third tradition is the Deviation Reduction Matrix, which reduces planet crime, or population deviancy, by 5%, and increases stability by 5 points. The fourth option here is Nanite Production Override, which lowers the amount of nanites needed to maintain your drones, by 5%. Emergency Plexus Signal, the last option in the tree, means that every time a Borg vessel is defeated, the Collective may gain 50 research. This is not guaranteed, but this tradition makes it a possibility. Adaptability, the fourth tree and the last one in the top row, focuses on planets and how the Borg can use them. Adopting the tree increases the number of pops that can live in each drone hive. Or rather, each pop takes up 10% less room than it did before. Finishing this tree increases monthly unity gained by 10%. It also allows you to use the planetary prospecting decision on planets, 
which is explained further in the tutorial on the differences between unicomplexes, subcomplexes, and planets. Finally, you also gain one Ascension perk. Meeting of the Mines is the first option in this tree, which increases the amount of nanites produced by 10%. This is helpful as nanites are used in jobs that maintain your pops. The next option, Defense of the Collective, increases the amount of hit points for defense platforms by 33%. This means that they will be harder to destroy and will effectively increase the power of your star bases. The third option, Age of the Collective, increases the amount of unity that is gained when you assimilate pops. This is explained in more detail in the tutorial about assimilating pops and planets. Gaining the appropriation tradition reduces the cost of resettling pops between your different unicomplexes, subcomplexes, and planets. This is very useful for the Borg as you will often need to shuffle pops between your different holdings. Normally, it costs 100 energy per pop, but this will decrease it to 75 or even less if you have other pop resettlement modifiers, which can be gained via research. The last tradition in this tree, Strength of the Collective, increases the amount of damage armies do by 33%. This is very useful for invading and assimilating planets using armies that you build from your holdings. Productivity is the first tree on the bottom row. It is focused on increasing the amount of resources gained through events and decreasing the maintenance of your buildings, districts, and armies. Adopting this tree will give you access to the colony harvest operation, which is covered more under the Borg Espionage or Operations tutorial video. Mass-produced exoskeletons, the first option, reduces the cost of your ships by 15%. This is on top of any other reductions that you have researched already. The second tradition in this tree, efficiency algorithms, reduces the amount of energy and resources required for the upkeep of your armies. Some armies need energy, others need nanites. You can see this information when you try to build armies. Superconductive power transmission, the third tradition, improves the colony harvest operation by increasing the amount of resources you gain from the operation as well as increasing the size of the colony that can be harvested. Again, more information can be found in the tutorial video on simulating pops and planets. Automated replenishment, the second to last option, reduces the cost of buildings and districts by 15%. This is on top of any other reductions you have, such as those gained via research. This can be very useful the longer you have it because of saving all of the resources to use for other things. Finally, the neural signal boosters tradition increases the amount of nanites produced by 15%. This is very helpful for supporting your pops as well as for Borg operations against your neighbors. The assimilation tree is a very powerful tree and is a must for any Borg enthusiast. When you adopt this tree, you are now able to build a total of three unicomplexes. This means you can build two more, since the one you start with is included in this number. When you adopt all the traditions in this tree, it reduces your Empire Sprawl penalty by 25%, meaning that you need less administrative capacity to manage your space and as a result of your penalties, such as the one to research speed, is less you also gain an Ascension perk. The distributed computing tradition increases your administrative capacity, provided similar benefits as I have just explained for finishing the tree. The Transwarp Relay Station tradition decreases Starbase maintenance by 20%. This is most notable with the amount of energy that is consumed by Starbases. In the next branch of the tree, Divergent Suppression allows you to build subcomplexes. As it says in the description, those are built on top of other megastructures that you will either find in the galaxy or be in control of when you assimilate your neighbors. More on subcomplexes can be found in the tutorial on the differences between unicomplexes, subcomplexes, and planets. Automated assimilation units is next. It allows you to build extra sections to your unicomplexes. Previously, you could only build three sections to your unicomplexes. Now it is possible to have up to five when you adopt this tradition, which fills the star system. Cogs in the Machine, the final tradition, increases megastructure build speed. This will be very important when you are building transwarp conduits or additional unicomplexes and subcomplexes as they generally take a long time to build. It also increases the number of star bases you can have by three as well. The Perfection Tree is inspired by the Borg's drive for this state as well as by the Omega Molecule, which the Borg considered to be the ultimate representation of perfection. When you adopt this tree, you gain the first upgrade to the Fabrication Complex. More about the Fabrication Complex is discussed in the tutorial video on Borg Buildings. You can also gain plus 10% for Anomaly Research Speed and Anomaly Discovery Chance, 
which can be very useful when you are still exploring the galaxy. Finishing this tree increases your base research speed by 5%. You also unlock another ascension perk. The first option in this tree, uplink latency reduction, increases the survey speed of your vessels by 50%. This is also excellent when you are still surveying the galaxy, especially in the beginning of the game. The Exploration Drone Solution allows you to upgrade the Fabrication Complex even further, allowing you to convert resources back and forth at higher amounts. The Coordinated Drone Link tradition in the second branch is especially powerful in terms of leader levels. Whenever one leader reaches the next level, all leaders gain 100 experience points. This stacks, so if 10 leaders reach the next level, all leaders will gain 1000 experience points. If this is exceeded, they will not be able to gain any more experience points this way for one year, although they will still gain experience normally. The Hyper Adaptive Evolution Tradition gives you access to additional research alternatives. More information about research can be found in the tutorial video concerning research in Star Trek New Horizons. Exploratory Firmware 2.0, the last tradition in this tree, focuses on leadership experience gain, increasing it by 33%. Your leaders will gain more points per point-earning event, meaning that they will level up faster. The Synchronicity Tree, the eighth tradition for the Borg, focuses on unity and increases the cohesiveness of the collective. Adopting this tree immediately gives a bonus of plus 25% to organic pop assembly speed. This means the pops you gain not by assimilation, but by growing them yourself. Think of the maturation chambers we see from the shows. The first tradition, Drone Network, increases the planet build speed by 20%. This means your buildings and districts will take less time to be constructed. The Biogenic Sync tradition increases the governor level cap by 1. This can be useful as leaders have the possibility to gain traits every time they gain a level. This tradition gives them an extra chance which is likely to be beneficial for your sectors. The Hive Synapse tradition focuses on reducing how many amenities your pops use by minus 10%. These are used by your pops and replaces the entertainment value found when playing other empires. The processing hub tradition improves ships by increasing the build speed by 10% and decreasing the, over the overall upkeep by 10% as well. This means it is slightly less expensive to maintain ships, meaning you can also build them more quickly. Finally, the self-recovery algorithms tradition increases your naval capacity by 10%. Especially later in the game, when you have a high capacity, this can be very useful to support additional tactical cubes or even the Omega Cube. More information on the Borg ships can be seen in the Borg ships tutorial video. Well guys, thanks for joining us. If you haven't already, make sure you give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to both of our channels. If you find you're struggling at all with Star Trek New Horizons, then please do check out our tips, tricks and tutorials playlist linked in the description below and at the end of this video. We also have a Discord server we call The Collective. We discuss everything from these videos, to Star Trek in general, to what we're having for Sunday lunch. We also make our announcements there as well, and organise multiplayer games that you can play with us. You can join our Collective using the link in the description below. The Collective must grow. Alright, that's it from us for now. See you next time. Make it so.